it's something that it's interesting how a lot of things that started even this show that started during the pandemic and especially during the quarantine uh a lot of these everything had to change just because the people who were here watching this show for example during the pandemic a lot of them uh they had to go back to a normal work so a lot of people that were in the chat back then they're not here anymore right because at that at that time we were just doing shows anytime and it was earlier too and uh yeah nobody everybody lost sense of of time and 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 having to sleep at a certain time because we were all trapped at home the whole world so um the verses at that time was uh people calling each other on the internet on instagram and playing a playlist of the songs that they have so i did i did one everybody did one it was great it was cool um and it actually broke a lot of record of live from instagram i mean yes and no because the brazilians like it's funny how when americans break a record for them like you said oh this is the record of the world no it's in america brazilians had one million people watching way before you guys just before just because of the size of their country uh same on youtube when i was like oh i have one million people watching listen those people had 20 million people watching but yeah anyway that's not the subject this show especially has been sold to thriller this show became um a show that is uh it's now like basically a a full-fledged concert and um everybody has been talking about it because of all the drama by ray j who came was drunk uh completely sang off notes his songs and uh the aggressive the, the aggressivity of the people during the the the, the verses not that, that you know people are talking they talk but i don't know they were like i think what i didn't like about these verses was the lack of professionalism like by everybody not the fact that i understand it's not it's not a show it's more like a yeah it's a show but it's more like oh this is my song this is my song i understand but there was a real lack of preparation that I, that's really what i felt it was a lack of preparation it felt like there was no rehearsal there was no even if you rehearse on on your side and uh so everybody has been dragging ray j or marion especially those two because i believe that omarion came there thinking that i'm gonna win i'm i'm omarion and i think highly of myself and my uh and i'm in la and mario came like on a mission it was like i'm gonna sing and it was very interesting because it reminded me of so many zook shows that i did where yeah i came sometimes and I see, you know, sometimes you do this show and you have people who uh, they want to to perform last because they believe that it proves that they are the best. I'm the I'm the superstar, whatever. And me, like, you know, when you have all the the smaller artists performing and then they tell you in the the three bigger ones when it's a plateau, they're like, so who's who's Keisha, you're gonna play. You're gonna play last, and then you got someone. Nah, nah, nah. Why would you play last? I'm, I'm more famous. Me, I was always like, no problem. I play first. I, because you know, listen. I always say to myself, I'd rather have a public that is fresh than a public that have been here watching people for two hours, because that public is tired. I'd rather have you fresh when you still have voice to yell my name, and those people never understood that. I don't perform to prove something to anybody and I don't even feel like I'm in competition with most of the people I find myself on stage with. So that's what I felt about this whole thing. And uh, I think it's a lack of respect as an artist. Uh, and I've seen it in my career a lot to come on stage drunk. I think it's a, it's a lack of respect for the people who paid their tickets to come see you perform. 
if you have 100 people, 500, 1,000, 10,000, and more people who are coming to to see you sing or to see you perform or to see you dance or to see you lip sync, whatever it is. I mean, you have to respect that and at least be on your best behavior and not drunk or on whatever substance. And, and it's interesting, people say, yeah, but the great numbers, listen, the more people are watching you, the more you have to give a good impression because to me, it was not, are you representing r &B? It's not this. To me, it's just, I don't, you know, when I look at a show, I'm not able to look at a show as a normal person. I'm always going to look at a show as a professional. I'm always going to look at a show as a label owner, as somebody who not only worked on his own shows, but also somebody who worked on shows for other people and somebody who has been on both sides, on stage or off stage as a, the person on the side who is responsible and, and having his artists perform and sometimes being the performer myself, both live or playback. And there's so many tools today that sometimes you don't understand. Like, you know, I've seen a lot of artists in my, in my career give excuses about, yeah, I could not hear myself, that the sound here, the sound that, yes, it is completely possible. But this is why you prepare yourself. If it's, listen, I did, back when I was doing rap shows, I would just come with some, a DAT, so that was a digital cassette with instrumentals in there, and we would rap on them. And sometimes we would write the songs in the afternoon and perform them at night. When I start doing a little, something a little more professional, uh, in TV, everything was always lip sync, just for uh, timing purposes. On um, and on, on TV, your mic is not even open, so when you, you you're singing your song, you don't even need to, to to use your vocals. Like just, but it's part of TV, right? In clubs, in the Zook world. Uh, it's the same that's the same thing i mean your microphone is open but still you have your you you're singing on top of your your vocals so if you're not comfortable singing or if you can't sing or whatever you can sing under your vocals like and people are not here to hear you prove anything they're here to see you enjoy the show listen to the music as a cd now, if you're in a big live concert, it's different. When you're in a big live concert, that's where you have to sing right, etc., etc. And listen, personally, uh, when I do a big live concert, I don't think about me or what I, I'm going to prove. I'm, I'm thinking about the public and what they're going to listen to. So the first thing I do is I get this. I don't want to hear sound coming from I don't know where that I cannot control. I want to hear the sound of the band, my backing tracks, everything in here, inside of my inside of my head. And I want to hear myself singing the same way I'm hearing myself talking to you now. Whatever I say in the microphone, I want to hear it here. I don't want to hear it here and there. No, no, no. no. I want to hear the chords. I want to hear the tonality. And another thing that I do is I bring something that you call um, auto-tune live. Auto-tune live, and you can you can put it at various uh, levels. But what it does, if you sing and let's say you your note goes a little bit whatever. You can it will put them back in the right place and depending on the the, the the how much you put it maybe will be 
you can hear it it's going to be like uh, or maybe it's going to sound very natural but as as a performer it's a great tool to help you the same way you put reverb eqs and and delay in your vocals like right now the, the sound that you're hearing is going through four plugins because yeah i want this show to sound great and some artists that i know they don't need auto-tune and it's fine and they sing and like all they need is to be able to hear themselves so to these people when they say oh, i was not hearing myself that's i said like, bro why don't you invest in an, an a system where you have ear ears that goes to your pocket in your pocket you have a a receiver and then in the in the soundboard there's a there's an emitter that is sending you everything you need to hear the mix a mix specially for you with the music and your voice so you know you can control exactly what you are singing and you can know if you are on tune and not or not etc this to me is the first the first time i did a live show that's the first thing i did that's the first thing i invested in let, let me show you how it sounds uh for example Um, yeah, for example, 2012, let me see, <sighs> let me see if the sound of Chrome is open for you guys, oh, and now it is, let me, uh, all right, so, for example, uh mountain of inspiration was good i hope you're doing good so look for example um let me, let me see if, oh yeah perfect for example on this show i'm in mozambique i'm performing with a band we live and i have my microphone is going to a computer computer is treating my voice and he's also fixing the bad notes if there are some. And that's a great tool. So on that show, the vocals were coming from the, the those things on the side, the the, the, the big speakers on the side. The, 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 in French, we say les retours. I don't know how you say in, a, I forgot how you say in English. But for example, in uh, Cap Verde, uh, in Cap Verde, I remember doing a show where I had my phone, my, my sound in my ears. And there I was really comfortable. So I think it's this one. stupid i'm not even showing you the image <laughs> Wait.
you see my pocket here? In my pocket, I have. So I, I was running. I was not. <laughs> I was not controlling my breath. But you see, in my pocket, I got a receiver that is sending me all the music plus my vocals, and here, and on on the left, you can see a computer. The computer is receiving my voice and trying to help me. And even for just in term of uh, uh, just in term of how you call this just in terms of of confidence it gives you more confidence when you know that you have uh you have a little bit of of you have a tool that is helping you it's like a, a security net and i don't even know why i mean listen if you're good at your vocals you don't have to but if you're not sure or if you're like me you're not a singer I'm not a singer. I've always seen myself as a rapper, as a beat maker. Yeah, I can sing some songs, but I'm not somebody who learned. I never took any vocal lesson ever in my life. So I just do what I feel. And I believe that if you're there, of course, the more you do, the more you learn. But if you're live in front of people, use that, use that shit to help you. So you don't sound like this guy. But he was drunk, so it's different. But um, yeah, so that's where you know when as I was watching it, I was a little bit. I was like, damn, why at that level, on that level of money, why are you guys doing this? Why are you guys like? I mean, and some of them were amazing, right? But there was a little bit too much aggressivity. Felt very like rappers, and um, he felt very. Uh, the presenter was doing a great job before the shows and in between the shows, but even in between the, sh the show, he was talking, doing comments that was like, I'm trying to enjoy this, these people singing songs that I grew up on. And yeah, other than little Sammy or Sammy and, and Mario, Mario showed like, yo, listen, he came here to sing. And Mario, as you could see, he had his earpieces. He didn't come here to show off he came here to sing and for verses an r&b verses i got really like i would say disappointed it was very entertaining but i was disappointed as a as a as a content owner as a person who did work with other people i was a little bit like yeah you guys i don't know so that's how I felt about it. Um, and yeah. And then, yeah, when I said when I saw Mario versus uh, me, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of Mario way more than than Mario. And I don't really know his thing. I was not a B2K fan, especially I was more. Uh, I think he was the generation after me already. But um Mario Let Me Love Me is, you Let Me Love You is one of my favorite song ever and uh, yeah when uh, Mario th thought that doing dance move was better than, than than singing the songs I think that he didn't understand the assignment it was a versus you have to to me, the way I see your verses is like show off your catalog and 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 sing the best songs so people can decide like who's the winner and and and, and all in all celebrate uh, yourselves as artists. And this one turned out to be some strange savagery because there's a lot of things that those people have to 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 talk about and and. A lot of a lot of fuckery that probably happened these last 20 years and you can feel that there's a lot of resentment maybe not between mario and and omarion but apparently between omarion and everybody else and like yeah it was eh, you know and ray j listen uh come on like but I loved when he was on Joe Budden explaining that yo he was he was the Casam Casamigo or something he was something that he drank he was so uh, he was just drunk 
he was drunk on stage saying come on like i mean there's something about um and uh, yeah you know like i, I don't fantasize the, the rock star comp uh, behavior i personally don't i'm uh I believe that when people pay to come see you perform, you you give your best, even if it's ten people. That's the way I see it. But listen, some people enjoyed, some didn't. Me, I know that I didn't watch until the end because it started at three a.m. here, or, or and at and at four or five hours. I was like, ah, I'm out, I'm done, I'm done. But yeah. <laughs>